Hey everybody, today I'm talking about three ways fasting improves autoimmune conditions. We know autoimmune conditions are on the rise. And in this presentation, I'm gonna show you how intermittent fasting, extended fasting, and partial fasting strategies can be used to downregulate inflammation and to help your body heal and overcome autoimmune conditions. And so we know that inflammation literally can affect every organ system of our body. And so we know inflammation is at the root of practically every single degenerative condition. It's involved in all of it from cancer to diabetes to heart disease to osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, digestive issues. All of this is all related to chronic inflammation. And so we've got to get inflammation under control if we're going to be healthy and well. And so many of these issues when it comes to chronic inflammation can also be categorized in what we call autoimmune, when our body's actually attacking itself, it's actually created antibodies. Antibodies are part of our Th2 immune response. So we can have chronic inflammatory conditions, like for example, asthma, that are more of a Th1 immune response, which don't produce antibodies. So asthma is not considered an autoimmune condition, but it is a chronic inflammatory condition where the body's overproducing inflammation. In autoimmune conditions, we're actually producing specific antibodies that target specific tissues. And you can see all these different uh, conditions that are out there from neurological conditions like MS, thyroid conditions like Hashimoto's, to uh, things that affect our joints like rheumatoid arthritis. And so we know that there's one major thing that is associated with both chronic inflammatory conditions as well as autoimmune, and that is a leaky gut. And so normally our gut, we've got these little villi, these little uh, one cell wall uh, connection, and they're held in together by what's called tight junctions. It's almost like the netting in a baseball glove. And those tight junctions don't allow for large proteins and pathogens like bacteria, viruses, parasites, they don't allow those things, yeast organisms, to get into the bloodstream. And that's important because we know that chronic systemic infections have killed more people throughout the history of mankind than anything else. And that's how do we get a systemic infection? We get pathogens in our blood, they travel to organ systems, and they feed on the organs and they grow rapidly and out of control. So the body has created inflammation as a way to keep the pathogens under control. Inflammation attacks pathogens. It helps kill them off. That's why when you sprain an ankle or when you get a cut, your body uh, aggregates all these inflammatory immune cells over to that area because it's trying to prevent bacteria and microorganisms from getting into the bloodstream. It's the same thing with the gut. So when there's gut, that's tissue damage. When the gut is damaged, when we develop leaky gut, now large proteins, now undigested food particles, these things are going to end up in the bloodstream. And the body will create an inflammatory process. And if it creates and tags certain antibodies, that is going to end up causing an autoimmune-like condition in your body. There's even theories that uh, many people deal with autoimmunity to their endothelial lining in their blood vessels, and that really heart disease is actually an autoimmune condition where the body's attacking its own endothelial lining, its own blood vessel lining and creating massive inflammation, plaque formation, and eventually atherosclerosis. So leaky gut is, again, the major um, thing that is correlated and is a causative factor in the development of chronic inflammation and autoimmune conditions. So we've got to be able to address that. Now, how does fasting impact our immune system? Well, we know fasting, when we, when we do intermittent or especially extended fasting, we are going to upregulate autophagy. And autophagy is our body's self-eating and self-healing and cleansing process. It's also going to reduce inflammation. And that's because we know that insulin, this hormone that takes sugar out of the bloodstream and puts it into the cells, also triggers inflammatory gene pathways. So it ramps up inflammation in our body. When we're not eating, we lower, in, we lower insulin and therefore we lower inflammation. 
Now, there's also studies about how fasting improves the microbiome. It's like, in a sense, kind of like mowing and weeding your lawn, right? It's regulating your internal microbiome. And, ten, and actually, studies are showing that it favors the development of good, healthy microorganisms like Ackermansia mucinophilia, which helps produce a healthy mucus lining for your gut, which helps prevent against the formation of leaky gut. So we get an improvement in the microbiome, an improvement in uh, the tight junctions and the stability of our gut. We reduce overall inflammation and we also regenerate immune cells. So when we have autoimmune conditions or chronic inflammatory conditions, we have a whole bunch of bad immune cells that are traveling around in our system. And when we fast, our body actually regulates, starts to destroy more of these bad immune cells and forms newer, healthier immune cells. And so this overall process is called autophagy, which again means self-eating. And autophagy is where our body will go into the cells and break down older damaged cells, such as bad mitochondria, right? Mitochondria that are damaged from oxidative stress. They're no longer metabolically flexible. They're poor at burning fat for fuel. Our body will break those down, take the raw materials and form good, healthy mitochondria, mitochondria that help us form energy and, and burn fat for fuel. And we want these healthy mitochondria are going to help uh, drive up our immune system. They're going to help give us more cellular energy. We're just going to feel a lot better, think sharper, have more energy throughout the day, lower risk of chronic disease. Now, here is how fasting impacts the microbiome. We know it increases the microbial diversity. And really, the diversity of species in the microbiome is a very important factor in the overall health of the gut. And when we have these diverse uh, microbial species, they're going to produce a lot of short-chain fatty acids. And those short-chain fatty acids reduce inflammation throughout the whole body, including the blood vessels. And so we also drive up T regulatory cells and we drive down the inflammatory pathway, which is through TH17 cells. So more T regulatory cells, that means those regulatory cells help our body dis distinguish between self and non-self, right? So when we have autoimmune, we have very poor uh, regulation of the immune system and it's attacking its own self. So that T regulatory cells come in there and they help regulate that. So we don't have that same, uh, you know, self attacking mechanism going on. It also re significantly reduces inflammation in the brain and allows the brain to really heal and regenerate. And we know the brain communicates to all the cells of the body. So very, very important there. It also uh, reduces leptin and increases adiponectin. And leptin resistance is associated with inflammation. So we want our body to produce less insulin and less leptin, but be very sensitive to it. And adiponectin helps our body burn fat for fuel and reduces inflammation throughout the system. So as you can see, it's a very important mechanism for how it reduces inflammation and helps improve autoimmune conditions. So how do we do fasting? Well, I always tell people to start by doing daily intermittent fasting. And you just start by doing a simple fast, 12 hours from your last meal to your first meal. And it really is simple. So if you finish dinner at 7 p.m., you wouldn't eat anything with calories until 7 a.m. So when you wake up in the morning, you drink a lot of water. Uh, at night, you know, after you finish eating, you can drink herbal tea, you can drink water, drink water when you first wake up, try to get eight to 16 ounces at least in your system before you even think about food. And if you do that, it'll actually be pretty easy to do that 12 hour fast. And you probably will not have an issue pushing it out to 14 hours, which is what we call the brunch fast. That would be where if you finish dinner at 7 p.m., then you wouldn't eat until 9 a.m., for example. When you drink a lot of water in the morning, when you first wake up, it suppresses your hunger hormone called ghrelin and you're able to fast longer. Now, the next step would be sticking with the brunch fast, but also extending the fast to 16 hours and doing it two days per week and ideally non-consecutive days. So it'd be like a Monday, Thursday, for example, we call that the crescendo fast. And that's really good, especially if you're a very lean female who may be dealing with energy, low energy, maybe thyroid issues, things like that, um, then crescendo fast would be a good strategy because it allows you to recover. 
So as you start to extend that fasting window, it is a mild stressor. We call it a hormetic stressor because it makes you stronger, but you don't want to overdo it. And so it's important to give your body recovery time in between. If you feel good with the crescendo fast and you push it out to the cycle fast, and that's where you're doing it basically alter alternate days. So like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example, you're doing that 16 hour fast. So if you finish dinner by 7 p.m., you wouldn't eat till 11 a.m. That would be an example of that. And if you're feeling good with that, then you can try a strong fast where you're doing a 16 to 18 hour fast, four to seven days a week. Um, so you're extending it out just a little bit more. And like, this is what I typically do is five days a week. I'm eating in a six hour eating window, which, so that's a strong fast, 18 hour fasting window. And then you can even try to push it to a warrior fast. And a lot of people do really well with this. They eat their meals in like a three to four hour or three to five hour eating window. Um, so eating two meals in that time span. And you may even go, go as far as doing a one day fast. Um, in fact, this is a great strategy. Once you build up your metabolic flexibility, your, your fasting muscle, you flex it by doing a one day fast every single week. So a 24 hour fast once a week, or maybe even twice a week. I've been doing it twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays, feasting, you know, in the six hour window on my other days. And um, it works really good for keeping inflammation down and under control for myself. I actually, uh, if I don't take care of myself, will develop psoriasis. My mom has psoriasis. I've had symptoms of psoriasis on my knees in the past. But when I follow my fasting strategies, eat right, keep my stress under control, sleep well, take some good supplements, I don't, that doesn't manifest. I'm able to keep that at bay. So um, all of us can express some level of autoimmunity, but fasting can be a key strategy for keeping that under control. Now, especially if you're really suffering with autoimmunity, then possibly doing an extended fast, like a three to maybe five day water fast can be very powerful for helping your body really rest repair and renew itself, regenerate new cells, get rid of those older damaged immune cells that are driving up inflammation in the body. And there's a great study here. And this was in, uh, what was a cell, uh, 2019 and done by Walter Longo and Roberta Bueno. And it was talking about when fasting gets tough, the tough immune cells get going or they die. What that means is the bad immune cells will die off like I was talking about. And you can see that fasting and severe calorie restriction on the levels and localization of different immune cells and the mechanisms responsible for them, that's really what it was looking at. And basically by going through this, this phase uh, and doing uh, basically calorie restriction, and they were looking at how the fasting mimicking diet could work, but fasting longer than 48 hours would actually downregulate these bad immune cells and help our body stimulate stem cells to form new healthy immune cells that are better. They're healthier for our body, more recognition between self and non-self cells. So how long and how, and how often to fast? Well, basically if you're a thin, lean person, you wouldn't want to do more than a three to five day fast every eight to 12 weeks. Okay. If you're normal weight, four to seven days, every six to eight weeks. And I would make sure you're good at intermittent fasting before you go on an extended fast. And that will make you more comfortable. Your body will be good at burning fat for fuel, make the fasting a lot more comfortable. If you're overweight, you can go longer periods of time, especially if you're obese uh, much longer periods of time in your fast, five to 10 plus days. Some people do great doing longer, 21 day fasts. And you literally could do it almost every month if you're very overweight or obese. You know, there's people out there that are 200 pounds overweight and uh, they'll fast for a month and lose, you know, 50 pounds and then eat for a month uh, following intermittent fasting strategies and then go ahead and fast for another month, right? And, and continue to push that weight loss and so that can be really powerful for getting rid of a lot of these inflammatory cells as well as helping burn fat for fuel. So remember this, you know, you don't want to fast too often, especially if you're thin or lean. If you're obese, it's hard to not fast too often. Um, you know, it certainly can, can drop 100, 150, 200 pounds um, 
you know, with several long fasts in a six to 12 month period of time. Now, partial fasting is another strategy that's really picking up steam. And you can do a partial fast where you consume 40% or less of your calorie needs per day. Most people are going to need between 2,000 and 3,000 calories daily. So if you're able to keep your calorie levels under, you know, certainly under 1,000 and maybe under 800, uh, but still consuming things like maybe bone broth or green juice or following the fasting mimicking diet as an example, or doing a fat or keto fast where you're drinking like butter in your coffee, maybe doing exogenous ketones or taking you know, a tablespoon of coconut oil or something like that. You can keep the calories down, again, under 40%. If you can keep it around, especially around 25% of your calorie needs, like 500 or less, it can be very powerful for helping your body get rid of these bad abnormal cells. Now, if you want to do it for longer than five days, I only recommend partial fasts really for about five days, okay? But if you want to do a longer one, then you can do a Daniel fast, um, which is basically taking out, um, you know, but Daniel in the Bible wasn't eating animal products or processed foods or anything like that. So it's really a whole food plant-based diet and ideally doing it more of like a calorie restricted, slight calorie restriction on it. And that can also be very powerful for a period of time. It tends to be lower in protein. And for a short period of time, protein restriction can really enhance autophagy and cell healing. So doing that for a short period of time can be, can be helpful. Um, but my favorite forms of partial fasts, I think get the best results, are the bone broth fast or green juice fast, fat or keto fasting, and the fasting mimicking diet, which is actually a product from Prolon, they send you a box with, uh, with food and it, gives, it portions out exactly the calorie levels. I think it's around 800 calories per day and it's nuts and seeds and olives, dried olives and things like that. So it is uh, low protein, high fat, so it's a ketogenic style, uh, high fiber sort of diet that's very calorie restricted and a lot of research that's been done on it to help improve autophagy, to help, help uh, improve autoimmune conditions. So it can be very, very helpful, especially if you don't feel good when you're water fasting, you may want to try a partial fasting strategy. So guys, hopefully this was a good training for you. If you have an autoimmune condition, I would highly recommend getting started with intermittent fasting and considering an extended fast or a partial fast as well. I think it will really help you heal faster. So you can check out the article below that goes with this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And hit the bell button right next to the subscribe channel. Um, that way you get instant notification whenever I go live. So you'll see where my next video goes up. And that way you won't miss any of these trainings. I've got a lot of great trainings coming for you guys. So stay tuned for those. And if you have questions or comments, please post them below. Give this video a like and share it with somebody that you know and that you care about. We'll see you soon, guys. Be blessed.